Hello. In this video, we are going to draw your attention to the formal similarity of two different problems in quantum mechanics. The first is to find the commutator of linear momentum and position with the commutator of angular momentum and angle. So we're going to show that simply by replacing symbols, we can essentially uh, solve the, a different problem by the same exact method. So formally, what we're going to do here is start with the linear momentum commutator problem and show that if we replace the position x operator with the linear momentum operator p, that's one thing. Two is we're going to replace the x coordinate with the phi angle coordinate. And then last, we're going to replace the linear momentum operator with the angular momentum operator. And in the process, we'll see that if you know how to solve the first commutator problem, you already know how to solve the second commutator problem merely by re making these three replacements of symbols. For the rest of the video, we will show the linear momentum quantum mechanical commutator problem on the left panel and show the angular momentum quantum mechanical commutator problem on the right hand side. Note that anything that is uh, topped by that little triangle, that little carrot or hat, is a sign that we're dealing with an operator. So x with the hat is the linear position operator. Phi with the little hat is the angle position operator. In each case, we are using the quantum mechanical version. So we also have the linear momentum operator p hat and its quantum mechanical definition of h bar over i times the derivative with respect to x. The quantum mechanical version of the angular momentum operator j hat, which is h bar over i times the derivative with respect to phi. Notice that since there is a formal correspondence between x and phi, they are both shown in red. And since there is a formal correspondence between the linear momentum p and the angular momentum j, those are both shown in blue. The problem itself is stated in the third line. Inside those brackets, that's the symbol to say the commutator of. In line four, we insert a dummy function psi to make it easier to manipulate the operators themselves. By definition of what a commutator is, we get that um, for the linear case, we have the x times phi applied to phi minus p times x applied to b. Just as on the right hand side, we have phi times j of psi minus j times phi of psi. If you are not familiar with either of these two problems, you can click on the videos in the upper right hand corner to see them worked out in complete detail. We are not going to do that here because the purpose of this video is to draw attention to the formal um, correspondence of these two problems, which at first seem completely different but which are solved in exactly the same way and uh, have a formal correspondence simply by changing all the references to the linear momentum and position 
by the angular position and momentum. One thing to keep in mind is why do we care about commutators? Well, if the commutator is equal to zero, it means that the operators commute with each other so that we can know both simultaneously with any degree of accuracy that we want. If the commutator is not equal to zero, then that means that we they do not commute, and therefore we cannot know both simultaneously to uh, a perfect understanding. So this is a application of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So whenever uh, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle apply, any time we have two quantum mechanical operators that do not commute with each other. When one is attempting to solve one of these commutator problems, one should keep in mind that the mathematical detail in the calculation that ends up leading to the fact that a commutator would not be equal to zero is that, as we see on the first line on the left and on the right, at the very end of each of those terms, we see the derivative with respect to x of x psi or the derivative with respect to phi of phi times psi. What we have there is we have the derivative of a product. So when we have this derivative of a product involved in the commutator calculation, this will always be, if it shows up in your problem, it will be um, the sign that the two operators will not commute. On the other hand, if you have derivatives you take are not of a product in your calculation, then it will turn out that the operators will commute with each other and the commutator will be equal to zero. One thing to keep in mind here is that the second line uh, continues onto the third line because those are the longest terms we have in the problem and trying to jam them both on the screen at the same time. I want it to be make them to be side by side. So uh, the second and third lines in each case are the same exact term. We notice that the final step in each calculation is to end up with minus h bar over i times psi. And since we put in psi as a essentially dummy variable, dummy function, at the end we essentially just remove it and we notice that in each case, minus h bar over i is not equal to zero. The important thing was tells us that the operators in each case do not commute. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.